Hey, what's up guys, it's Justin here and I just received my MacBook Pro 15 inch with touch bar. So I thought I'd make a video for you just outlining one of its major features. And this computer, by the way, costed me almost $4,000 of my own hard earned money with the intention of using it as an editing station, but more importantly, something I can take on the go and still get my video work done. But as anyone else would be looking at a computer at this price point, I am still very skeptical as to whether or not it is even close to being worth its money, but most importantly, the price jump from last year's model. And I want to make this video today to outline the touch bar, give you a bit of an overview and just my opinions as to whether or not I think that feature alone is good or even worth the extra cost. Of course, I will also be doing a full review, so please hit that like button if you're excited for that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and check out this new feature. So with the touch bar being one of the most talked about features of the new MacBook Pro 13 and 15 inch, I thought I'd take this time to show you guys around it and also some of the major apps that are currently supported. The resolution of the touch bar is 2170 by 60 and it has a nice matte finish to it that not only has it blend in with the keys, but it also doesn't get fingerprints that easily. Unsurprisingly, a lot of the things that have been optimized so far are the Apple standard apps including Notes, Safari, Mail, Finder, Keynote, Final Cut Pro 10, but the API is open and hopefully more developers will use this as in the end that is unarguably the most important thing about this touch bar and what will make it worth it. The messaging app lets you do some pretty cool things, not only being able to access the predictive text functions, but you might have seen on Twitter a lot of people are having fun with the emojis. It gives you a very nice visual representation of the touch bar and you can just scroll through and view all of the emojis trying to pick the perfect one for your message. Although this is cool, it is really no way to be buying a new MacBook just for this, but I guess for the first few days it is one of those features that just keeps you excited about the new device. One of the best applications for the touch bar though are things to do with editing, whether it is photo or video, and Adobe has also announced that they will be supporting the touch bar later this year. Someone who uses Photoshop a lot, that is really exciting as there are a lot of things that are located on the sidebar and toolbar in Photoshop. Just looking at what the Photos app is able to offer and what Apple has integrated here, it allows you to fine tune your options that adjust the lighting, the color, saturation, and just parameters to do with photo editing. It really just visualizes the experience here and is one of the occasions where I think the touch bar is beneficial in real life use. Additionally, as someone who uses Final Cut Pro for everything in terms of video editing and client work, the touch bar has some of the optimizations that allow me to complete my work faster. For the most part, I'm sure you would agree that a lot of these features for the touch bar are just something you're going to play around with in the first week and afterwards you're probably going to take it for granted or not really care whether it was there or not. If you're in an industry that is time sensitive though, the touch bar might be beneficial in the short and long term. Along with the 10.3 update of Final Cut, the touch bar is nicely supported with this software. I'm able to trim my clips with the touch of a button and instead of having to use key commands for example to cut a clip, it does speed up the time especially if you have a long project to edit. The touch bar also gives great audio settings and also a nice view of the entire timeline and the way it's laid out. Being a Chrome user, I didn't really want to switch to Safari, but after using it with the touch bar, I might be changing my mind. If you have a lot of bookmarks that are added, you are able to browse through them very quickly and you can also access your tabs just from viewing them on the touch bar. One of the things you're going to enjoy the most though is the ability to scrub through videos whether it is in Safari or in your preview player with a visual representation of the length through the touch bar. The mail app conveniently integrates what is on the toolbar and the sidebar into the touch bar. Nothing really surprising about this but if you have a ton of emails to go through this will be very handy. Going back to creative apps though, the touch bar can also be taken advantage of in this place and Pages of course is supported right off the bat. With a lot of the major stylistic options being presented in the touch bar instead of having to find it through the menus. The gradient color menu is also something to expect to see in more artistic apps, but I definitely noticed some stutters and lag through the touch bar when using it so hopefully some updates can fix that very soon. So at the end of the day, I will say that the touch bar is good for very specific reasons. There isn't really a reason to buy it if you're just gonna be using everyday tasks such as scrolling through emojis, using the notes app and the mail app. In those cases, I think it is a compliment to the platform, but it isn't anything that you have to have. But in certain situations where it can speed up your process and increase your productivity is an app such as Photoshop, which is still yet to be optimized. And also programs such as Final Cut Pro 10, as if you're a video editor and time is an important commodity, your money is going to be able to pay the computer off due to the amount of time you saved using the touch bar to edit your videos. And I will tell you that from real life usage, it did increase my speed in editing a little bit. 
but I will still say that this computer is still overpriced. The touch bar doesn't really change that obviously. And being a first generation model, if the touch bar isn't something you need right away, a lot of the times I would advise that you wait until at least next year to jump on the new MacBooks. Other than that, please subscribe to the channel if you would like to be notified of my review and also tweet me over on Twitter at jtechapple if you have any questions about the MacBook and I'll see you all in the next video.